It's not six inches. The hem of the Lizzie dress is officially muddy. <laughs> Nailed it. I have been obsessed with Jane Austen ever since I watched 2005's Pride and Prejudice starring Keira Knightley. So as I mentioned in the last video, the internet is mildly obsessed with this brown dress. Why? I think it's because it fits into the vein of cottagecore. And I think people like this Lizzie Bennet dress because it's not only cottagecore, it's Bennetcore. What is Bennetcore, you ask? It is hems that are six inches deep in mud. It's a deep and abiding love for your sister Jane and not so much for your sister Lydia because, oh boy, she's a lot. That Shark Darcy scene from the ball at Netherfield where he kind of swims up behind her and swims away like a socially awkward Jaws. Genteel poverty. It's got that aesthetic quality to it. Robin egg blue walls that are slightly peeling because your estate is entailed to your male cousin, Mr. Collins. That is Bennett core. And that is what we're getting into today while making the Lizzie Bennett dress. So let's get into it. This is the first time I've ever tried to turn a mock-up into a pattern, so take everything I say with a grain of salt. I started by seam ripping the bodice of my mock-up into separate pieces and then tracing them on to a piece of gridded wrapping paper. I made sure to label all the pieces to know what they were. Front, two side pieces, other front piece, center back. I made the mistake of leaving seam allowance in my garments, so wherever I did leave seam allowance, I tried to note it on the pattern using dashes. I also made marks for where I needed to cut darts. Then I took my pattern pieces and cut them out of, what else, bed sheets. The pattern pieces were by no means perfect, so I made a lot of adjustments on the fly. One of those adjustments was taking the center back piece and folding it in half, and then cutting it on the fold so that both sides would be exactly even. I also decided to use the same side back piece for both the front and the back, so I had to fix where it adjoined the right front piece. To do that, I just taped on an extra piece of wrapping paper and cut it out until it matched. I then threw on a terrible Christmas rom-com and cut out the pattern pieces out of my fashion fabric. I estimated that if I was really careful cutting out the bodice, I would have just enough for a floor length skirt. Of course, this requires spatial reasoning, which isn't one of my strong suits, so I struggled for a little bit. But in the end, I took the plunge and was successful in cutting out my pieces. That included one placket piece that's 4 inches wide and about 24 inches long, a waistband piece that's about 32 inches long and about 2 inches tall will turn into 1 inch of bias tape, the center back piece, which as I mentioned before, I cut out by folding the pattern piece in half, a left front piece that's cut on a slight diagonal, two side back pieces that are identical, a right front piece that's been cut at quite a diagonal angle. I pinned all the pieces together and then ran them through the sewing machine. I also did the same with the lining, but I didn't record it. I pressed all the seams open because that's really half the battle in sewing. I sewed this together earlier today and then realized it was inside out because this is supposed to be the lining and since the front is asymmetrical it has to be done the opposite of the shell on the outside so I had to redo it. Hopefully it's correct. I'm about to put it together with this outside layer which has also been pressed and sewn together and it's a little bit wonky because this is my first time uh, taking a mock-up and trying to make a pattern out of it. I'm going to try to match up the various seams and then I'll sew around the outside leaving the bottom open and leaving the arms open and I'll do those by hand I think. Am I doing this? I'm doing this wrong. I'm doing this wrong. No. I'm doing this wrong. It's supposed to be wrong sides together not right sides together. Dang nab it all straight to heck bean. Okay, right sides together, seams and wrong sides and all that jazz, out. <sighs> Nailed it. I then sew the outer layer and the lining together like the small gremlin I am. I thought about doing facings, but it seemed easier to just do an entire lining because there's so many facings that would need to be done. Lining is a good way to trap in the waistband on the inside. Here it is, the lining in. 
probably need to sew this up and just leave like a little chunk to flip. But I think, man, it's pretty dang nabbed close. This should have been sharper. So now I just gotta do the belt, do the skirt, and finish all the edges, do some closures. I decided not to put darts in because I can never make darts look good, but I might change my mind about that. Basically, it's just a bunch of gathering the skirt down and the waistband, I left some wiggle room in it because I know I'm not the best at measurements, so better to go way long than too short. So I can just basically extend all that and then it's probably a good idea in case I put in any more quarantine weight. Not that we're gonna worry about that. We're just staying alive. I'm going through a lot, okay? Absolutely thrilled with how this is coming together. I should knock on some wood or something. I know now that I've said that, something disastrous is gonna happen. One thing I saw the tailorette doing that I'm probably gonna do is to keep the, the lining from showing through when it's this way around. What you do is sew the lining down to the seam allowance so that it will tuck under really neatly. The tailorette gave me the idea for how to do the placket as well. She's got a placket in the back of a child's regency dress. I haven't sewed in the placket yet. I sewed up the, the sides of the skirt, and so basically you take the long strip, pin it all the way down one side, and then when you get to the opening of the two panels of the skirt, you continue with the same piece up the other side, all the way to the top, and then stitch along that V-shaped opening, which is basically a similar idea to how gussets are done, you sew along the triangle. You'll have this with this flap that you can use as kind of like a little modesty panel for your opening, and these will kind of close over one another. I promise it'll make more sense when I've sewn it. We're gonna try and uh, top stitch this down. I stitched through the seam allowance in the lining, ensuring that I stayed pretty close to the original seam and that I was pulling taut on the lining fabric. Then I folded in the raw edges along the arm opening and pinned them in place to prepare them for a ladder stitch. I tried to ensure that the folded edge of the outer layer extended further than the lining so that the lining wouldn't show when the dress is being worn. I did a ladder stitch by running my needle parallel from the bottom side of the fabric, through it, and then out the bottom side again, and then going directly down into the bottom piece of the lining fabric with the same stitch. And essentially, it creates a ladder that's invisible. It's a little bit hard to describe, but once you've done it, it's a pretty simple stitch, although it's not terribly strong. What I did over here and what I'm gonna do on this side is to just very carefully backstitch through the lining fabric and through the seam allowances, but not come through to the outside. So it's gonna get these three layers, put them all together. It's essentially what I did by machine on this side. I'm just doing it by hand, very close to the edge here. It's gonna make the sleeve stronger. For one, it's not going to show through to the outside, and it's also going to kind of keep the lining in and not exposed by stitching it down to the inside. I accidentally kind of made a curve on this line instead of doing it straight, so it was bubbling out. So I went back in and did a straight line down on the inside. I seam ripped out the old stitches that were in there and then gave it a press to kind of try and make it more uniform. I did a running back stitch along the entire arm opening to make sure that my seam was going to be really strong since I didn't trust the ladder stitch to keep it with all the wear and tear that the arm openings would take. I just put darts into the side of the bodice because the, the angles weren't quite right without them. And I, I looked at the video again and Lizzie does have darts that are kind of close to the side seam, so I added those in. And then my next step is to take the bias tape and pin it around. I have the bias tape start and have a little bit to wrap around the very front of the left side and then it goes all the way around and then on the right side it'll extend for a little bit this will go on the placket and then this will be where it buttons so i'm just pinning one edge of the bias tape to the outside part and leaving the lining free and then i'm going to stitch all the way around and then i will attach the skirt to this part of the bias tape after using pins to secure the waistband piece on, I took it over to my machine and sewed all the way around to attach the waistband to the bodice. 
Got the top sewn onto this edge of the bias tape, and now I'm sewing the skirt onto this edge of the bias tape, and then from the outside, it's just a little waistband. My original drawings say to leave four inches free on the top half, but my placket is actually exactly four inches wide. So I have four inches of the placket sewn on, and this is the start of the skirt over here, and then the other half of the placket is actually folded over. So this is the front of the skirt, and the placket's folded under. So they will meet up here and overlap just a tiny bit. So if it opens at all, you see the placket instead of what's underneath the dress. I've got to stitch the inside of the bias tape to the skirt. Then that will be completed and all that will be left will be doing the hem and doing something to strengthen it on the inside. My patron is Lady Catherine. Lady Catherine de Bourg. Leaving two to three inches of the waistband free for closure. Starting at the placket, I pinned nine inches of fabric directly to the waistband without gathering. For the rest, I ran in gathering stitches and gathered it down until it fit into the remainder of the waistband. Then I stitched the skirt to the bodice. So I thought I was gonna be done with this dress today. It's really boxy. The waist is too low. It's super loose. The gathers in the back look great, which is wonderful. Everything went together correctly, but I think it's too loose and too low. So my plan is to seam rip the top off, take in the back seams a little bit because they're smaller anyways in the real thing. Like this should be quite small. Um, and then I will re-sew the skirt on a little bit higher so it falls more at my natural waist. Other than that, it's really good. It's long, it goes all the way to the floor. So that's great. Um, just gotta take it in a little bit. I left a lot of extra just in case, but it's come back to bite me in the butt for once. But hey, the, the placket works real good. Part A of the placket, part B of the placket, so you can't see what I've got going on under here. This is where I end. This is where the skirt's ending. In here, I'm gonna take that in close to that much, not quite that much, because I want to have room to eat and be alive and human and things. Then I seam ripped the bodice off with careless abandon. I measured and pinned equidistant points for where I would sew the buttons on, making sure that the lowest button was almost at the waistband. I decided to go with shell buttons, even though the buttons on the real one look like a weird sort of brown plastic. I did buy some that color, but decided that even though the shell was not like the original, it was something that I would enjoy more in real life. I sewed on the buttons, and then I used embroidery thread to make little loops to tuck the buttons into. I might have to come up with a better solution later, but for now, it works. I folded the raw edge of the lining to entrap all of the raw edges of the waistband and the skirt. I then pinned it in place. In retrospect, I should have been more careful here to make sure that the lining was still fairly loose because I found out that it was pulling the skirt up too high and making the back pucker in a strange way. I did have to seam rip this out and do it again, but once I was more careful about how I pinned everything in, it looked really good. And it does add a little bit of support. I finished it off by whip stitching the lining to the waistband. Is this Lizzie dress approved? All that I had left were a few finishing touches, like hemming the bottom of the skirt and stitching on hooks and eyes to the waistband for closures, which naturally was jewelby improved. This was the first time I successfully used my rolled hem foot. It basically feeds in and creates an even rolled hem. It is a bit tricky to get it to feed in correctly, but once you've figured out the tactic, it's really simple. Since you've stuck with my shenanigans this long, I might as well tell you that I've made a Jane Austen themed coloring book called A Quick Succession of Busy Nothings. And I also have a free social distance themed coloring page that you can download at the link below. It's a good way to pass the time in the plague days, especially if you've seen Pride and Prejudice 5,000 times like I have. It has 31 Austen packed pages full of illustrations, patterns, quotes from her books, and from this movie actually. It also includes illustrations from the 1890s of Austen's novels by illustrators Hugh Thompson, H.M. Brock, and C.E. Brock. Click the link below if you'd like to get a free coloring page or buy the coloring book itself. I've yet to snag myself a Mr. Darcy or even a Mr. Collins, but I'm absolutely thrilled at how this dress turned out. And I certainly plan on wearing it as an everyday dress probably without the pirate shirt. There aren't very many things I would change about it. I might take in the loops that close the buttons a little bit so that there's less of a gap at the front, but I'm really thrilled with how the gathers turned out and how long the hem is. I was even able to drag it in some mud. It's not six inches, but... The hem of the Lizzie dress is officially muddy. <laughs> Nailed it. 
positively medieval. Instead of posing elegantly for a reveal video, I befriended a duck. And then I tried to reenact some Pride and Prejudice. Oh, no, where's your Mr. Collins and I are engaged. Engaged? Yes. To be married? Yes, of course, Lizzie. What other kind of engaged is there? I hope you were able to live out your Pride and Prejudice dreams vicariously through this video. If you did, I'd love it if you liked this video and subscribe. And in the meantime, keep making.